Hello again and welcome. The reason I'm putting this follow-up video to my sanding video a couple of days ago so soon is a few important and pertinent questions were raised and I think it's necessary to put this video up and answer them verbally as opposed to in the comments which I will also do but not everybody reads the replies or even the comments in that section. The most uh, popular question was do I clean down with methylated spirits or denatured alcohol uh, in between each grit when inertia sanding? Well the answer to that is and the reasons I give are my personal reasons and my personal experiences. When inertia sanding I don't, I have to be honest. Uh, I do sometimes. Why? I don't know but I normally don't. The reason I think is that I, I have no problem with the, the finished surface, it is as good um, as I'm looking for. I think it's because you're actually sanding with the piece spinning quite a lot quicker than when you do with hand sanding and maybe the centrifugal force comes into play there and throws the grits off the piece. I don't know but I have never found a problem. I do however clean the piece after my last grit before applying my finish. So hopefully that answers it. I can't give a um, a specific reason but I think that's the reason why I just haven't found it necessary to do it between each grit. Having said that I would I would suggest that it is good practice to do it. Okay so hopefully we can leave it at that. Uh, do I use a clean part of the paper towel or a clean paper towel in between each grit when cleaning with meths or DNA? Yes I do. I normally use a fresh piece of paper towel. Nothing wrong with just moving, a, moving the paper towel you've used on your 120 let's say and then using a fresh bit when you get to the 180, 240 but I just tend to grab a new piece of paper towel. If you don't do that you're going to be, if you do a 120 you clean it down with mess, you've got the 120 on the towel and then you use that on the 180 you're just transferring the 120 grit back onto the piece. Um, actually that would most probably be worse than not cleaning it in between because you've got all that grit on the paper being transferred and contaminating your work for the next finer grit. So yes, new paper towel or new part of the paper towel you're using for each cleaning operation. Could I possibly do a video on wet sanding? Uh, the simple answer is no because I never wet sand. Not that it's not a good method of sanding, it's something I don't do um, and I never have done. If you want to see videos with a person using wet sanding there's a guy called Carl Jacobson over in the United States. You might have heard of him. I'll put a link to Carl's channel, not that that's really necessary and Carl normally uses some form of a lubricant when he is sanding. So go across and watch Carl and see what he uses and see if that is the sort of thing you're looking for. Um, the quality of abrasive. Quality of abrasive is important and I'll say at this juncture when you make videos you go to edit them you think oh, I should have mentioned this, I should have mentioned that. That's why it's so important for people to contribute and input their comments because then it gives me an opportunity and others like me to address the questions and the concerns that people have. I don't think I've ever done a video where I've been absolutely happy that I haven't left anything out and I've been doing it seven years so you know maybe it will happen one day. Uh, quality of abrasive, it is also important in my view to use a good quality abrasive, not the paper backed ab uh, abrasive, the sort of what I call decorative decorator sanding paper, no good at all in my opinion. Uh, either cloth backed or I'm, I've been using for quite a while now a um, it's either the hook or the loop. It will stick to you, you know, to your um, sanding disc. It's very handy stuff. It's good quality, it's flexible and that is the most important thing is flexibility when you're going around curves and into little, little grooves and crevices. Um, and lasting longer, I don't mean you can use it time and time again, but it lasts longer on the piece and it does an effective job for a longer time on the piece you're using. So quality abrasive is a must in my opinion. 
Do I change the sanding discs or throw the sanding discs after each use? Well again, strangely enough, with the sanding discs I don't. I don't feel it is necessary. Very rarely do I use the same sanding disc more than twice, but it depends on a lot of things. It depends how much how long you've used that sanding disc on a piece. If you've got a small little piece you're doing, like that bowl, I could possibly use it twice. If I'm sanding on a big piece, uh, a vase or a hollow form, whatever, 99% of the time when I finish sanding that grit, I will throw that disc away. That's just me. I'm not saying it's essential, it is just the method that I use. And one thing that nobody mentioned, I don't think, but it's something I forgot to mention, is when you're sanding, you're generating heat. It's a bit similar to when you're sharpening your tools on a grinder or a belt sander on the Pro Edge, whatever. You're generating heat, and heat is not our friend in those situations, especially when sanding. If you're fruit woods like apple, pear, and uh, plum, all cherry, all those fruit woods are very very prone, uh, you as well, very prone to heat, what I call heat cracking, I don't know if that's the right terminology, um, and if it gets too hot you get these very fine um, heat cracks. So heat is not your friend, so again be very aware when you're sanding your work to be mindful of the heat that you're generating. And quite often when people say, oh you know I always double or treble my abrasive my sandpaper or I put a pad behind it because I burn my fingers. Well if it gets that hot and you're burning your fingers you're making a big error by carrying on because you're creating much too much heat and it's not good. So my advice is as I've, as I've said in the other video is an even light pressure let the sandpaper do its job. Don't try and help it let it do its job and be very mindful of the heat you're generating. As soon as it gets a bit warm, stop. Let it all cool down and carry on. But if you carry on, you're gonna be generating more heat and causing more problems for yourself than you need or indeed want. That just about covers everything, I think. There are basically six main, main points I wanted to bring up. Um, again, thank you for everybody that uh, contributed to the last video with regards to comments and questions that's always well appreciated and again thank you very much indeed for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you very soon cheers now